Hey babe, how do you feel this morning? Mm-hmm. Morning of your procedure. I'm hungry. Or do you want McDonald's? I can't eat anything. Yeah. Um, I have to be fasting. I feel good overall. I'm optimistic. I'm trusting in the Lord, but... Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my surgery vlog. But before I do so, I want to share a little bit of the backstory on how we got to the point of doing surgery. This is going to be in link and connection to my prior video that I recently posted. I'm talking about some symptoms that were dismissed for years by my doctors. Now, what were these symptoms a cause of well I discovered that I had uterine polyps but unfortunately as many women I didn't discover that I had uterine polyps until I got surgery the only hint was that something was showing on an ultrasound uh, before my doctors were like hey we think you should do a uh, surgery why the surgery well because i had been trying to conceive for eight years i had several symptoms that could have been a leading cause to either endometriosis which was my doctor's original uh suspicion they thought i had an 80 percent chance that i was suffering with endometriosis and we just didn't know because many times it does not show through a typical ultrasound blood work ultravaginal ultrasound anything right so unfortunately, that's one of the things that would only come to discovery once you do the surgery and the doctor's actually performing surgery with a camera internally in your uterine. And the same goes for uterine polyps. Now, as I previously mentioned, I had been seeing my doctor consecutively, uh, con- consistently for six to eight years. Prior to that, I did see a doctor, but I was very consistent since I got married and I was trying to you know, become a mother and conceive and have children with my husband. So what happened? For years, I had these symptoms. Long, lengthy cycle, which was 10 days or more. That's, I discovered recently, not normal. And the the natural menstrual cycle can range from three to five days. And in a healthy range, it could last seven days. It could last a week, right? According to several sources. And please refer back to my prior video as I give more information about this. However, mines were lasting an exceedingly amount of days, 10, 11 days. That's not normal. My cycles were also very heavy and I, the type of pain, I had really extreme pain and many times I had bleeding between cycles and well, that's not normal and this was a concern for my doctors. Since it had took me so long to get pregnant and there was no other reason, I was currently listed as unexplained infertility right my doctor's telling me well your ovary volume's good everything looks great your blood work looks great i was checking off all the boxes so what's the problem why am i not pregnant now while i'm a woman of faith and i believe that everything in god's time is perfect time i also know that faith without actions is unfortunately dead it is my part to do what i can and then trust the Lord to do his way and his and to do the miracle because only God can do the miracle. So I continued to be consistent and get checked. And it wasn't until the recent appointment I had late October of 2023 where I had changed doctors and I was giving the medical office that I would was visiting for almost eight years one last chance. I said, I'm going to change doctors because I felt dismissed by other doctors or other providers without mentioning names and well in this case I was suffering a lot and I didn't feel heard and I felt like I'm being made feel like I'm crazy and I'm not dramatic I could hold some pain and drink a pill but a pill can't fix this you see what I'm saying it has to be something and I don't want to continue through life just assuming I'm okay and I'm not and then I'm in this vicious cycle just like with many women according to theclue.com along with other articles and resources three out of ten women suffer with uterine polyps experiencing symptoms as i mentioned so i'm gonna give this location one last shot right i felt brushed off my doctors made me feel hopeless like there's nothing i can do for you go see a fertility clinic without checking other potential options and checkups and other blood work that needed to be done 
So it's not that I was looking for a cause of my so-called infertility or my unexplained infertility because as of yet, the doctor said everything's good, right? But it's because I was doing my due diligence and I just had this gut feeling like what I'm dealing with every single month, it's not normal. It's painful and it's affecting my life. So we had to do something about it. I finally see the last doctor. I said, I'm going to give this place one last shot. She sees my record. She pulls up my ultrasound. She's like, you know what? Something's off. This isn't normal. I understand. Don't worry, Nora, that I've gone through this. She connects me to, a, to another doctor that's also a surgeon and two other surgeons. And they come up to the conclusion of there's an 80% chance you have endometriosis. Thank God I don't have endometriosis, but they said this all sounds like a cause of that, like you're suffering symptoms of endometriosis or potentially polyps or other issues. We had even tested for PCOS. I don't have PCOS. Thank you, Jesus. And my heart goes out to any woman dealing with any of these medical, you know, symptoms, with any of these medical and fertility issues. My heart goes out to you. I'm on the same boat and I'm rooting for you. And that's why I wanted a side note. I wanted to make this video to show my experience before, during, and aftermath um, as a vlog, but also give information and make it educational and know that you're not alone. And I hope that my video can help someone one way or another, right? So, okay, back to that. So they said, um, I was considering, hey, can I do a DNC? Because when I had my miscarriage back in 2021, we never did a DNC. My, doc my doctor felt that I didn't need it because I had healed so well after my miscarriage. So now two years later, three years later after my miscarriage, I... So my doctors came to the conclusion that instead of a DNC, they wanted to go a little bit more profound. And it was recommended to me to do a laparoscopic procedure. What a laparoscopic is, in other words, is a cleaning around the uterine lining where endometriosis is typically found in women that have endometriosis, right? Endometriosis, unfortunately, can be found in other areas of the body, but because my issue was, you know, all these symptoms I had with my menstrual cycle leading to unexplained infertility, and it was not showing through ultrasounds, blood work, and other tests done, they wanted to go around the uterus. But then, uh, a few weeks later, when I was having my... Uh, pre-op appointment with my doctor, it was brought up to me that I should also do a hysteroscopy procedure. And I was like, you know what, might as well do it all, do it all in one shot while we're here already. Thank God my doctor brought this up, which was also my surgeon. And thank God I said yes to this because due to the hysteroscopy procedure is not just around like the laparoscopy, it's internal. They get to go inside of the uterus and that's where the uterine polyps were found. To many women, they can get pregnant with very few small polyps. But to most women, these uterine polyps does affect their fertility because they may be too big. And here I'm going to place what are uterine polyps. So polyps are also known as endometrial polyps, which are a result of cells in the lining of the uterus overgrowing. Polyps can vary in size, affecting women in different ways in the reproductive system and menstrual cycle. They can be benign, which means they can be non-cancerous and the cause of uterine polyps. So unfortunately, right now, there isn't sufficient research to prove what causes polyps. Trying to conceive was very uncertain times for me, and I trust in the Lord. I trust in the Lord's timing, and I do believe that this surgery was part of my journey and God guiding me, because if it wasn't for the hysteroscopy procedure, I would have never discovered the issue, the root of all these symptoms I was facing, and it totally made sense. I'm so grateful for my doctor because after my surgery, and I was waking up from anesthesia, and he told me, Narita, we have answers, with a big smile on his face, and it's just like this relief, although it was something negative, but we got answers, and now those polyps, I had so many of them, um, and there was a really large one, it was now removed and it was sent to test. Many times some polyps are benign, which means that they are non-cancerous. But unfortunately, um, there is a percentage of women who do have precancerous or cancerous polyps. So yes, guys, this can turn into a serious thing. And I'm glad that we caught it when I did. Okay. 
I'm so grateful for the opportunity to get this surgery because now I feel I have found newfound hope um, and freedom. And I'm so grateful uh, to the Lord because now after I removed all these uterine uh, polyps from my system, I know that my menstrual cycle is going to change. My symptoms between cycles are going to change. My life is going to change. And I am looking more up and more optimistic to getting pregnant. And many may say, well, God could just do the miracle and healed you. Absolutely. God can do it. But we also need to be obedient and we also need to live out our faith and we need to take action in our own health as well. You see, God guided the way. I almost gave up. I almost felt discouraged. My doctors prior to my recent one that was like, let's go for the surgery. The doctors prior were like, hey, just go to a fertility clinic. There's nothing we can do for you. You're fine. We don't know what's the what's causing you to not get pregnant. We don't know what's causing your pain. Just drink a pill. And there's no pill for that. But this doctor finally said, no, this isn't normal. You're not crazy. Let's get this checked. And because they went in, in my, you know, uterus and around my uterus and, and did a 360, 110% checkup, I discovered what was really going on. And FYI, even if I was dismissed to that fertility clinic, I couldn't even do IVF or any fertility procedure with the pre-existing uterine polyps. It wasn't going to work. So many times we can't jump to an easy way out or something that appears to be an easy way out because it may not work. And the good news is that even during my procedure, the doctor uh, also performed an HSG procedure, which for those who don't know what what the HSG procedure is, is basically to test uh, the tubes okay to test the fallopian tubes and to make sure that there is no blockage within the fallopian tubes so it's a sperm simulation they insert a dye into the um, vaginal cavity right and through a camera they can see and track this dye flowing up at the fallopian tube if this dye that's pretending to be you know the function of the sperm if this dye that's pretending to be the function of the sperm, right, is assimilation, doesn't go all the way up the fallopian tubes successfully, that may be an indication that there is some type of blockage inside of the fallopian tubes. I'm so grateful that my doctor, also my surgeon, uh, performed an HSG testing and ta-da, everything's good. So the problem is not in my fallopian tubes. Um, at first we thought, well, was there was probably a misunderstanding that there was a blockage in my fallopian tubes or that there were polyps or something in my fallopian tubes and that wasn't the case yes thank god my fallopian tubes are clear i had done an hsg testing back in 27 2016 to 17 and because that was so long ago it was best to do it again after the medical procedure and well thank god there's no issues in my fallopian tubes. The uterine polyps have been removed from my uterine, even the very large mass one. And I was also discovered that there was also a fibroid. So all this was a combination of what was causing all the symptoms I was suffering for so long. I recommend and I highly encourage you to fix the root of the problem. If something's not normal, don't allow no one to brush you off. Get things checked. Do your due diligence. It's your health. Take action and have faith with God. All things are possible. Honestly, I just have so many cramps right now. I could be 100. I'm in so much pain and I can't even take anything for it, which yeah. sucks. But we're moving forward. I honestly just want this to be over with. And then after surgery, I need food because I, I woke up starving as if I didn't eat yesterday. And yesterday was Christmas Day. I don't understand. <laughs> but nothing, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to try to, we're going to try to capture as many moments of uh, my surgery. Of course, not during surgery, but surgery and the aftermath and. I love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Tag along for more and hit that notification bell. Today's surgery day. How do you feel, babe? 
like from your perspective, how, how do you feel? I feel good. Just hoping it's a smooth procedure, very quick. Um, Lake Nona, our medical center is actually really good. Um, that's where they're really good. Uh, I know a lot of the doctors over there. Um, I work right across from the application, so I'm very confident. They're going to be in good hands. So it's going to be good. It's be good. Just hope it doesn't take any delays or anything. And that everything is just on time and smooth. Same. Thank you, baby. I hope so too. I Like I said, I trust in God. I just I want this to be over with, to be honest. It was long anticipated. I've prepared as much as I can for this day. And um, yeah, messy hair don't care because I can't really do it. I can't have makeup on. Um, I can't have nails or nail polish because of the procedure. When you go on anesthesia, they want to see, um, my mom told me that you can't have nail polish because if your oxygen goes down, your nails turn black and they can't see that if you have nail polish. They don't want nothing altering with any medications or procedure they have to give you. So that makes sense. So we're following instructions this morning. I washed my hair and just put a conditioner on it because that's as much as I can do. I have this hat my mom gave me yesterday for Christmas. And we are on the way to pick up our mom. It's a pretty rainy, gloomy day after Christmas um, today in Florida. But it's like there's a peaceful atmosphere. Do you, would you agree? It's super chill, peaceful atmosphere today. And besides the gray skies, I'm feeling pretty great. Father God, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, for today, Lord, that we were able to have this schedule, Father God, in good timing. Thank you, Father God, because everything is in your timing. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that this is going to be a successful, very easy procedure, Father God. It will be well, Father God, that as they go in, Father God, that they correct anything that they need to correct, Father God. Going forward, Father God, that my wife's womb will be fruitful, operational, and healthy. Just ask you, Lord, that you please be with us, Lord, to cover us today. I ask you, Lord, that you, your angels surround right up, Lord, the entire time that you're, that they're guiding, that you're guiding the doctors, Father God, that you're guiding their hands, and you guide them to use the correct medications, the correct tools that they see and observe, and they check the correct things, Father God, and leave nothing overlooked, Father God. <laughs> we just thank you, Father God. We ask you, Lord, for your divine favor and grace, your wisdom and your protection and your favor and grace and blessing. We thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, because you are in control of today. And we just love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. All right, guys. Let's do this. Bueno, Father God, <laughs> you go for operation. We're here. All right, love you, babe. I'll see you in the You okay? Okay, yo traje un termito con un stick. Lo tengo ahí, el termo del agua. Y el jack, el mismo, porque hay que hacer un poco de so once we came in, I had to check in. They had me fill out a bunch of paperwork. Once that was finished, they brought me into prep. You know, get ready for surgery. Get ready for anesthesia, actually, and surgery. Have my cap. I'm gonna give you more information soon, but actually, guys, I had so much pain before this. I was curled up in the bathroom with my mom, trying not to cry of the intense cramps and pain I had the day of but I thank God he allowed it to happen this way because that way firsthand the doctors can see what kind of activates during my cycle and causes this extreme pain but we're staying optimistic so nurses came in and we signed some paperwork I got blood work done they're gonna treat me if I'm low on anything that's not supposed to be low before surgery and I got these very cool, um, if you see that on my leg, she said that that gives a massage while they're doing surgery. I said, okay, do they sell that on Amazon? <laughs> so that's gonna be, it's like compression for my legs. 
I currently have the blood pressure machine because they just took my blood pressure, um, the oxygen meter, that, and they're going to run the labs. Then I'm going to get some medicine and they're also running an IV right now. So we've done a lot of things. Urine sample, oxygen, IV, medication, leg compression, and blood work. So let's see. So far, so good, guys. Oh, and I think she said they're going to go get mom and Shaheen now because mom and Shaheen are with me. So they get to see me right before I go in for anesthesia. I'm staying optimistic. I'm so calm. I just, it's getting more real. It's feeling more real now. Thank God my labs returned great. Then they brought in mom and hubby for one more goodbye before anesthesia and surgery. And then Shaheen mm -hmm. caught the aftermath here. They're walking in after I woke up from anesthesia. And that was loopy, guys. Okay, don't mind me. I look crazy. I look crazy. It, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Sleeping beauty right there. Sleeping. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Did you dream of Charlie? No. Say something, Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, the doggy. The doggy? Oh, what dog do you have? Oh, the little. You have two. One is girls glow with another charm. That's good. So we're um I'm getting Hey guys, Narita here reporting first day aftermath of my surgery. Um am I in pain? Yes. Am I uncomfortable? Yes. But we are trying our very best to recover and rest and for those wondering what type of surgery I did I did get a laparoscopy done with a hysteroscopy I have to make sure to say it right each time um because if not I'm just gonna say gibberish and then um an HSG at the same time so the doctor did three procedures during one surgery which was perfect I just thought do it all whatever you have to do do it now <laughs> so I don't have to go through this again and, well, I do have an incision in my abdomen, a little higher than my abdomen, and in my belly button. And so you could just imagine certain movements hurts, trying to walk. I think the worst part was, funny enough, was waking up from anesthesia because of I felt all different types of pains at one time. It was like a shocker. Like to wake up and suddenly feel all these things, you almost feel like this uncomfortable, desperate feel. On top of that, when I woke up from anesthesia, my blood pressure dropped and my oxygen dropped. So there was a lot of commotion in my room um, or in the space I was at. And it just was a lot happening at once. But they got under control. They were trying to get me to open my eyes. For those who don't know, after the surgery, the, it takes about two hours. For the anesthesia to wear off and after those two hours they were trying to wake me up but I woke up feeling all these horrible things like not to sound dramatic but at this like when I was trying to wake up from my anesthesia um like all at once right like it was imagine just all at one hit I felt um like a horrible upper back pain along with my chest hurting I felt like I was going to throw up and I couldn't open my eyes and I felt so out of breath but with the worst back pain they did warn me about it because in order for the doctors the surgeon to perform the laparoscopy they have to fill you of these airs so you feel all these airs and gas like on your neck and shoulders they also asked me prior the surgery if I have pre-existing neck and shoulder pain which I did because of a car accident a few years back and it was recently hurting me, so it just made matters worse. But it was a combination of not just that I could handle that, it was the feeling of not being able to breathe and just wanting to vomit at the same time was torturous. Um, once they put oxygen on me, helped my blood pressure get back and normalized, um, helped my blood pressure get normalized, then they called my mom and my husband in, and it just things got better from there. 
I was still dozed out, loopy, um, until I woke up today in the middle of the night, like, which has happened. <laughs> and then I was like, how did I get changed? How did I get dressed? You see, because I was just so out of it. And I apologize if I'm out of breath, guys. Um, I'm not feeling too well, but I'm so grateful to God that the surgery went well. We got a lot of answers and the doctor removed unnecessary things from me. I did have polyps. Um, it's hard to publicly speak about this, but I also felt it was important to bring awareness and to, um, if I say I'm going to bring you along my journey, to bring you along. You guys know I've been trying to conceive and this surgery is a huge part of my health improvement, my reproductive health, and also part of the start of a new trying to conceive journey. So I am so grateful to the Lord. Um... And because this is going to be part of my story and my testimony, I I wanted to keep this diary and document this experience and know that if you're a woman um, or a guy dealing with a female in your life that is struggling to conceive, please make sure to be responsible and constantly check your woman's health. Um... I did every year and it took eight years for my doctors to, after I went through a series of doctors, right? Um, finally, my, the last doctor I changed to, because that's the power you have. You can change your doctor. You're not getting answers. If things aren't getting done and resolved and you still have the same issues, medical issues, you, you know, I ended up changing my doctor and she's amazing. She referred me to, she got opinions from three surgeons and three doctors and they all decided I should get a laparoscopy. I was hoping just to do a regular DNC because I didn't get one done when I had my miscarriage in 2021 because my doctor at the time thought I healed very well. And I'm grateful for that. I healed well. Thank God. Amen. I didn't need a DNC. But where I'm from in Puerto Rico, that's like automatic. You have a miscarriage, you get a DNC. It's like almost mandatory. But it wasn't mandatory here. So in Florida, so I never got it done. So fast forward a year and a half, two years later, my new doctor's like, we think you should get a laparoscopy, which is thorough in and out. And because they also found that polyp and yeah, so now we're here. And I was going to the doctor once, at least once a year for years and years. I was on top of my game doing what I had to do. Finally, I got to this point, which all the puzzle pieces led me here to get a laparoscopy surgical procedure done. And this is my story. So yes, I'm re recording from bed because obviously I, you know, got this procedure done in my abdomen. It's very challenging for me to get up. Imagine the movement you do to get up to from bed. You actually press in at some point in your abdomen. And it hurts a lot, guys. It really does. Um, I'm currently not in my room. I'm in my guest room of my house. I'm so grateful for this room because I have a two-story house and it is so hard to walk upstairs. I haven't been able to go upstairs and this is just day two. I got surgery yesterday, today, aftermath pain and um, hubby sleeping next to me. Um, and yeah, I'm grateful that my mom and my husband is here, but I'm going to bring you along the journey. I'm going to check in here and there so you can see my improvement. Yesterday, of course, surgery day, I didn't eat until late at night. Um, I had a light soup, like just liquid. And today, hubby made us breakfast, mom made lunch. And I've just been eating little bit by little bit. You have to take care of your health. You have to make sure your levels are up. If you're anemic like me, make sure you're eating iron fortified foods. You've lost a lot of blood during this cycle. You've lost a lot of blood for the surgery so you have to make sure your nutrition is optimal take care of yourselves take care of your body remember your body is the temple of god and the best is yet to come guys i hope i could keep this down guys i don't know it just came out of nowhere it's 
technically day four from surgery, but day three post-op, if that makes sense. Um, three days after surgery. And I was, like I said, I was doing okay yesterday other than the pains and discomforts I, I have. But this morning, it was not it. I woke up. Sorry if this is too much TMI for you. Skip to the next 10, 15 seconds. But this is the reality of post-operation. This is the reality of coping with the, an aftermath of a laparoscopy procedure. And this is why I'm keeping it in the vlog. Because if I'm going to share the experience post and pre and post operation experience with you guys this is just part of it and it is normal to feel sick to your stomach and have multiple side effects or symptoms after surgery um vomiting nausea was on the list and that's what i'm dealing with this morning i didn't even feel like eating nothing i'm usually like a breakfast person i enjoy breakfast typically but today the fact that i didn't want breakfast and not just that because I could do without food sometimes. I, I could be used to that. But the fact that I have not wanted coffee in the past two to three days, it just speaks just on how I feel. Because you y'all know I love coffee. <laughs> I feel so sick to my stomach. This is the most speaking I've been able to do all day. It's about noon. And I'm just going to try to have this soup, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And the best is yet to come. We're staying optimistic here. I'm being told I shouldn't really try to do too much, honestly, because I don't want to delay my healing process. Fudge, getting up is the challenging part because I have to use my abdomen to get up and that's where everything's so sore. But I'm trying, I'm strong, we're resilient. We could do this, yes, yes. All right, guys, here I am uh, two weeks post-operation. Um, I was trying to go up the stairs, take small steps. Shaheen gave me the stick he found outside to help lift me. But um, I just wanted to get on here to share that when I had my two weeks post-operation appointment checkup with my doctor, I asked him why I still felt pain like this discomfort and pressure in my abdomen even after two weeks when I'm supposed to be so much better now while I've healed incredibly well the reason why thank god right the reason why I still feel it is because he said we had to go in there and scrape a lot and it was profound and we had to do a lot to you he, he literally said it like we were there for for a while we had to remove a lot and that's why you're still feeling pain and discomfort and pressure when you're trying to walk or even struggling to go up the stairs two weeks after and it just made so much sense so if you're going through this know you're not alone it's normal it's okay but always check in with your doctor in my next video i'm gonna give you an update aftermath on how my cycle has changed after my hysteroscopy and laparoscopy procedure and now i'm looking forward to what is to come thank you so much for watching i hope that this video um gave you some sense of hope it helped you one way or another if you're in the process of getting a laparoscopy hysteroscopy hsg or any type of uh fertility medical procedure done um in your female reproductive areas and organs just know i am praying for you i pray that the lord guides you heals you and please don't lose hope don't let your faith waver there is always a way and know that with god all things are possible we're rooting for you and the best is yet to come take care be blessed don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already until my next video take care thank you so much for being here guys we're in this together <laughs>